Hello, welcome to this Wasabi user bucket separation demo. My name's Neil Simpkins, I'm a senior systems engineer for Wasabi in the UK. So one question we often get asked is uh, customers who want to have multiple users and they only want to have those users have access to certain buckets. By default, when you create a user in Wasabi, it won't have access to anything. And then we'll use policies to allow access to certain buckets and areas. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to create a user, uh, create a bucket, create a policy, assign the policy to the user, which will allow that user to see his own bucket, but he won't be able to see anyone else's bucket. So the first thing I'm going to do as normal is just remove myself because um, as I always say the only person who wants to see me normally is my mother so there we go and we'll go ahead and uh, access the demo so let's just get rid of PowerPoint good job okay so the first thing we're going to do is log into my Wasabi console as a root user so let me just go ahead now and get my MFA code do there we go that should allow me now to sign into the console so here we are in the console we can see if we look under our users tab um, we've only got uh, one user that I was playing with uh, uh, for Veeam separation but no other users in here I'm logged in uh, as the root user so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a bucket that we're going to use um, I'm going to call this bucket what should I call the bucket? I'm going to call this one bucket for barley. And barley is my dog, um, although she doesn't really use many IT services. That's what we're going to call it for today. So bucket for barley, and I'm going to create that in London. I'm just going to go ahead and create that bucket. Nothing special on it. Um, there we go. Bucket for barley already created. Now, because I'm a root user, I have access into that bucket um, and all the other buckets. But what we can do is create a sub user that can only access the bucket for barley. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a new user. Uh, we'll call it barley. That's my dog again. And I get the option of whether I want them to have um, programmatic access. So as in they can access the bucket through a browser or uh, some other kind of application. Or do I also want them to have access into the Wasabi console? Um, well, I don't really want to give barley access into the console. So I'm just going to give uh, programmatic access. Okay. Do I want to assign barley to any groups? No, not at the moment. I'm going to leave that empty. And do I want to attach any policies? Well, no, because I want to create my own policy so that she only has access into the bucket that I've created for her. So I'm not going to attach any policies. And I'll just go ahead and create my user. Uh, now, it's going to create some access keys and secret keys for Barley. So I'll go ahead and copy those to the clipboard. And I'll just come onto my other screen and paste those in. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to use S3 Browser. Um, and we're going to create a new account. Uh, we'll call this one Barley. It's her access. Uh, S3 compatible. I'm going to stick the endpoint in. Uh, I've got it over here just because it saves me time typing it in. So because I'm using London, I'll use s 3 eus onewasabisyscom And then I'll take the secret, the access key, sorry, and the secret key that was just created when we created the user barley and I'm going to add that as a new account so there we go but what it said is you know this user doesn't have access to any buckets so you see I can't see any buckets it's not allowing me to do anything although I've logged in um, that's the only thing it's doing it's failing to get the bucket list because this user has been denied so what I'm going to do now is come back into the Wasabi console and I'm going to come onto the policies tab and we've got our out of the box policies for giving admin access and full access and read only and write only but I want to create a policy just for that folder so I'll come ahead and create policy and I shall call the policy barley uh, access there we go uh, description I could just give it the same and then I need to create my policy. Now, there is a policy generator up here that you can use where you put in the rules, add denies on what you want to do. Or if you know a bit about um, 
the scripting, then you can just go ahead and generate the policy yourself. Uh, I've already done that. Oops, it didn't like that. It got rid of the policy name again. So let's just put that in. Barley access. And then description. Uh, same thing. Oops. And I'm going to drop the policy that I've already created in here. So the policy is valid. Um, so the policy pretty much states that this... Uh, when I attach this policy to someone, they get the allow to list all buckets so they can see all the buckets and I've allowed them access to the bucket for barley. So that's all it allows them. So list all the buckets and access S3 access into that bucket. So if I go ahead and create that policy, we'll see that on the normally on the second page. There we go. Barley access. So I'll go ahead and I will uh, go back to my user barley. And I'll click on the policies tab and I will act, get my barley policy, barley access, and there we go. So now down the bottom here, policies attached to barley, barley access. So that should now, um, if I go back to my S3 browser and refresh, I can now see all of my buckets and I've got access into bucket for barley. I know I've got access because I've got no error uh, boxes popping up. And I can go ahead and create uh, a new folder in there, um, Neil's Pictures. There we go. And I'll create my new folder. So there we go. I've got full access into that file. I can upload files into there, um, you know, because that policy allowed me to have full access. However, if I think, oh, do you know what? I wonder what's in this, this folder here. And I go and click on it. I'm just denied. And even if I try and um, allow request to access, it just denies. I don't have the rights to see these other po these other folders. I can only see the bucket for barley folder. Now, normally it's a pain to keep creating policies and attaching them to single users. So I would probably generally use a group for this uh, in the future. So if I go into my barley user again, and I'll just detach that policy there. Um, and I'll go in here and I'll create a new group. So this is group is going to give um, the barley bucket access. So there we go. That's the group. I'll create the group. And then in the group, I can add uh, barley as a user. And then I can attach the policy uh, barley access. There we go. So I've created a group um, called barley bucket access and in there I've added in barley and I've attached the um, barley access policy so now again if I go back to s3 browser do a refresh nothing should have changed for me I still have access into uh, the bucket for barley bucket um, but what I don't have access into still are any of the other buckets um, that are in the system so that's it really. Um, very, very simple to do. So remember, create a bucket, create a user, and then create a policy that allows that user to have the access that you need. If you need to see um, this policy here, if you go onto the Wasabi knowledge base um, and you type in separation, you'll see how to, how to separate access at bucket levels. And it goes through exactly what I've gone through today. Um, and it also has the policy that we listed, uh, sorry, that we used today listed. So you can just go ahead and cut this policy, obviously changing the uh, changing the bucket name for whatever bucket that you're going to use. So there we go. That's, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's demo on user bucket access separation. Thanks for watching.